Hello and welcome to Shard, a channel dedicated to all things Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Uh, my name is Tim and today we are going to be taking a look at the monastic tradition of the way of the long death. So the long death monk in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Now this is part of an ongoing series. In fact, I think this is the last subclass review in the series for the monk. So we've been going for quite some time. Now, if you haven't seen the previous videos in the series, uh, the earliest parts, uh, the earliest uh, episodes, we were looking at the basic monk features and took a deep dive into the various feature of the, features of the monk, uh, including all the new features in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. So if you're not familiar with the basic mon monk features or you'd like to learn more about the Tasha's features, the new ones, then please, by, uh, by all means, do check out the videos. They're, they're linked down below. So in this episode, we're going to be concentrating purely on the features of the the uh, long death monk and how those tie in and synergize with the other monk features. So when you become a monk uh, of the way of the long death at level three, you get a little bit of flavor text. Monks of the way of the long death are obsessed with the meaning and mechanics of dying. They capture creatures and prepare elaborate experiments to capture, record and understand the moments of their demise. They use this knowledge to guide their understanding of martial arts, yielding a deadly fighting style. So a nice little bit of flavor text at the beginning to, get, to set the scene for your rather sinister monk that you're starting with. So I have to say that, you know, I think this is probably my favorite monk subclass just in terms of the flavor, quite literally, uh, and also in terms of, uh, of the features that you get. So it's a very powerful subclass. Now, you get one feature at level three, which is Touch of Death. Starting when you choose this tradition at third level, your study of death allows you to extract vitality from another creature as it nears its demise. So when you reduce a creature within five feet of you to zero hit points, you gain temporary hit points equal to your wisdom modifier plus your monk level, a minimum of one temporary hit point. Uh, so usually when you when you hit this point at around about level three, you, your wisdom modifier is likely to be around a plus three, a plus two or plus three, and your monk level is three. So you'll be getting six temporary hit points. Now eventually that will go up to up up to twenty five uh, temporary hit points whenever you reduce a creature to zero hit points. So this particular feature is open to exploitation. Um, although I would probably argue that the flavor text about capturing creatures and experimenting on them also kind of leads you down that path. Uh, but the typical uh, way this is described is, is the bag of rats. So if you carry around with you a bag of rats, um, when you when you reduce a creature to zero hit points, you do have the choice of not killing it and just reducing it to unconsciousness. So you can choose to, to hit one of the rats in your bag and knock it out knock it down to zero hit points, knock it out and get temporary hit points. And you can do this at pretty much any point. So in between combat, so you can constantly be topping yourself up with temporary hit points. Now, your DM may not like that very much. I think rules as written, that does actually work. Um, and you can argue it either way. Uh, I would make sure you have an agreement with your DM as to what they will let you do. Um, either way round, uh, I think you should also talk to your party members um, and they, sh you know, if, if, they're, if they're being nice, they will let you become a, a, a kill stealer and, and get the last blow in on creatures in order to reduce them to zero hit points so that you can get this benefit quite often. Um, it's quite a nice uh, feature for a monk. So monks don't get a lot of hit points anyway. They only have a D8 hit dice. And so being able to top up with temporary hit points pretty regularly is a very nice thing to be able to do as a monk. It's a very nice defensive feature. Now the next feature you get at sixth, at sixth level, uh, you gain the ability to unsettle or terrify those around you as an action. For your soul has been touched by the shadow of death. It's a wonderful flavor text again. Every creature within 30 feet of you that, that you can see uh, must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or be frightened of you until the end of your next turn. Now, this is not a party friendly ability. It's worth noting that immediately up front. So if you do this within 30 feet of your party members, you will scare them too. Um, but, you know, the frightened condition um, and any frightened creature has disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of its fear is within line of sight. 
So anything that can see you at this point um, is, is, is going to have disadvantage on their attack rolls and their ability checks. And the creature can't willingly move closer to the source of its fear. So you can be a, a one man um, kind of battlefield controller at this point. You, you could, um, especially you know, if you were covering the retreat of your party, for example, um, or if you found yourself alone while scouting, you can basically run, run around doing the equivalent of and everything around you that is susceptible to fear um, will be taking wisdom saving throws at this point or, or essentially not be able to come any closer to you uh, and have disadvantage on any attack rolls that they might make against you. So this is, this is quite a nice free crowd control feature. It doesn't cost you any key points to do this. You just can do this ability anytime you want to as an action. All it costs you is an action. Uh, worth mentioning, actually, that the, the touch of death feature that you get at third level also doesn't cost you any key points at all. So they're both completely free from a key point of view, which is really, really nice. Now, at 11th level, you gain the, the truly overpowered feature <laughs> this monk gets on top of a slightly exploitable feature earlier, uh, which is you can use your familiarity with death to escape its grasp. When you are reduced to zero hit points, you can expend one key point with no action required to have one hit point instead. Now, this means that uh, you get this at 11th level, at which point you have 11 key points per short rest. So if you're getting, say, two short rests per day, um, then you can survive death up to 33 times per day <laughs> at 11th level. I mean, this is a crazy ability. It's amazingly strong. Um, I mean, you probably don't want to be constantly being reduced to zero hit points turn after turn and burning key every time this happens. But if, if it ever does come up, then, then you know, it's very, very hard to kill a long death monk at this point. Uh, it probably also means that you always want to have one or two key points saved up uh, just in case you ever need this. So you probably don't want to, uh, to go down to zero key points. Um, but uh, yeah, it's an amazing ability. Uh, and, it's, and I think, you know, certainly if sort of the ability to get up to 11th level is probably the strongest ability any monk gets up to 11th level. Uh, the open hand monk gets an amazing ability at 17th level which is the save or die quivering palm ability. Now, apart from that, this is probably one of the strongest monk abilities out there. Um, this one does actually cost you some key. So it's the first of your abilities that does cost a key point. Now, uh, the final ability that you get at 17th level is touch of the long death. So starting at 17th level, your touch can channel the energy of death into a creature. So you can touch one creature within five feet of you as an action and you expend one to ten key points and the target then takes a constitution saving throw and it takes 2d10 necrotic damage per key point spent on a set on a failed save or half as much on a successful one so up to 20d10 necrotic damage if you spend the full um, the full 10 key points this is a constitution save, so a lot of the creatures that you will be encountering will have decent constitution saving throw, but still it's quite a nice uh, feature to, to have at this level. It's maybe not quite as impactful as the Quivering Palm that the, uh, that the Open Hand Monk gets at this level, but it's still quite a nice thing to be able to do. It does only require a touch, it doesn't require an attack to land this, so unlike Stunning Strike, you don't actually have to land an attack first. You just touch someone, and then they have to take the save um, or take this big bunch of damage. So again, situation, situationally potentially very useful. So that's all the features you get with a way of a long death monk. Uh, now, they're all the features that you do get are essentially defensive features with the, with the exception of that 17th level feature, which finally allows you to do some damage. So it's this defensive or crowd control features essentially. Um, pretty much all the way through. So this monk does make a good candidate for, for a more tanky style monk, uh, which, is, which is the build that we're going to do today is, is a little bit more tanky. So I think there's kind of two ways of approaching this monk. One of them is to, is to choose options when you're building it to, to boost the damage because you get a lot of really good defensive features already. And then that can give you quite a well-rounded monk. Uh, the other way is to double down on the defensive nature of this monk and make them into a bit more of a tank. 
Um, and so I think those are the kind of the two major approaches that you could take for this particular monk. Uh, I will say that, you know, a nice race fit uh, from a role play perspective with the mastery of death is a tabaxi because you will literally then become the cat that has the nine lives. So, um, so yeah, that could be quite good fun. Uh, it's not what we're going to do today. So what we'll do is um, we'll go over to D&D Beyond and see how this monk works in, uh, in our build in D&D Beyond. So we've picked the custom lineage this time around. So I've picked up uh, Dark Vision from my, uh, from my custom lineage rather than a skill. And uh, I, the reason why I went this way was I wanted to get a feat straight away at first level. So I picked up Abyssal, so a fairly sinister language to go with our fairly sinister monk. Uh, and the feat that we're picking up is Defensive Duelist which is when you're wielding a finesse weapon with which you are proficient and another creature hits you with a melee attack, you can use your reaction to add your proficiency bonus to your armor class for that attack, potentially causing the attack to miss you. So plus two proficiency bonus at level one means that anytime anything hits us with a melee attack, uh, if we have our reaction available, we can use that to increase our armor class by plus two um, and that might cause the attack to miss. This, of course, will scale with our proficiency bonus all the way up to a plus six bonus eventually. Uh, we do need to be wielding a finesse weapon for this. So, so this, monk, this monk will be wielding finesse weapons. So the class we're picking up. Now, what we're doing is we're going monk way of the long death and we've, pick, we've picked up one level of death domain cleric to go along with this. So um, yeah, and I picked this one essentially for the flavor to match in with, uh, with the sort of double death feeling. The grave domain cleric is another one that might be, nice, that might be a nice kind of synergy for this particular monk. So the reason, one of the reasons why I picked the death domain over the grave domain was that we, we do gain proficiency with martial weapons through this particular um, cleric. So what we're going to do is we can take one level of monk at the beginning and then one level of death domain cleric straight away, uh, which is going to give us the proficiency in martial weapons. Um, and it does also give us our, our um, reaper ability. So we get to learn one necromancy cantrip. Uh, and then when the cleric casts a necromancy cantrip, that normally targets only one creature, the spell can instead target two, creature within, two creatures within range and within five feet of each other. And we picked up the chill touch. Yeah, um, cantrip here. Um, so, and then I picked up Toll the Dead as well. So I've now got two options for that particular feature, the Reaper feature. So as usual uh, with with my monk, I picked up Guidance and Word of Radiance as my two other cantrips. So when I pick up a cleric level as a monk, this, these are the two that I normally go with. And then we've got Bless, Healing Word, and Shield of Faith. Uh, and we pick up our sort of uh, Death Domain extras which are false life which is more temporary hit points if you if you want to get some more temporary hit points from that way and ray of sickness is the other one that we pick up another necromancy spell which uh, forces uh, it's a ranged spell attack that forces a target to take a constitution saving throw or, or take 2d8 poison damage don't suspect we'll probably be using that all that much but it does give us a little bit of a, another ranged option with our with our monk so those are the spells that I picked up. And then the monk features that we've got, as we, uh, as we mentioned, um, we already picked up Defensive Duelist right from the get-go. Uh, and so then our next ability score improvement, we're going to pick up another feat. Um, and the feat that we're going to pick up here is the, is the Slasher feat with Dexterity. So this one will allow us to boost our Dexterity by another point. And the slasher feat, uh, what that allows you to do, once a turn, when you hit a creature with an attack that deals slashing damage, you can reduce the speed of the target by 10 feet until the start of your next turn. So this is going to tie in very nicely with some of our other monk features. We've got lots of mobility. So if we do go in and hit something um, with a slashing attack, we can reduce its speed, uh, which means that we can do this kind of hit and run attacks that I like to do as a monk. Um, when you score a critical hit that deals slashing damage to a creature, you grievously wound it, and until the start of your next turn, the target has disadvantage on all attack rolls. So it's two kind of so it's like a movement debuff and uh, and an attack debuff on a critical hit that you can get from this feat. This is going to tie in quite nicely with what we want to do with this monk. Uh, at the beginning, we went with uh, with dexterity. 
um, and we drop two more points into dexterity as our, our custom lineage to get us to a 17 and then we've topped it off to 18 with the slasher feet and we've gone for 14 constitution and 14 wisdom we went with the hermit background this is a fairly sinister character he's not particularly sociable so um and we picked our bonus uh, skill proficiencies in medicine and religion and a herbalism kit on the way through and then the equipment that we've picked up um we we picked up a, a short sword at level one which was our kind of finesse weapon to help us at, that, at level one and then by level two um we, we picked up this level of cleric and got martial weapons proficiency so we're probably going to switch switch over and start using a whip uh, because that's going to give us a reach attack with our monk we can move up to 10 feet with a with a target from a target and hit it with a whip and try and stun it with our whip attack uh, and if we're successful then we can move in and do our, our flurry of blows and our unarmed strikes and to try and do a bit more damage so this this can allow us to attack from a little bit further away if we want to using the whip and the whip nicely ties in with the uh, with the slasher feet as well so at, at monk five uh, cleric one so level six altogether uh, we have an armor class of 16 45 hit points and i've given myself some temporary hit points assuming that uh, that i'm i'm using my equipment so i do have a bag of rats in my equipment um <laughs> So I've given myself a custom piece of gear, which is my bag of rats that I'm carrying around with me to make sure I can top up my temporary hit points. Again, you know, this is something that your DM may take exception to. So make sure you clear this with the DM first. I've got some bits of equipment that I'm not using yet. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll turn those on a bit later, assuming that we've picked them up at some point during our adventure. Because now at this level, um, we've, we've picked up our whip. Now, uh, there is a little bit of an issue uh, with the new dedicated weapon feature um, from Tasha's Corner of Everything. It hasn't been fully integrated yet into D&D &D Beyond. So it's telling me that I'm using my whip as a 1D4. Uh, it will actually pick up. It, I, I'm, I'm dedicating it as my weapon. Um, so it should pick up the martial arts die and be a 1D6 at this point at level 5. So because your, your martial arts die rises to 1D6 at level 5. So I should be doing a 1D6 plus four at 10 foot reach with my whip uh, for my main attack so i can do it at 10 foot reach if i want to um, i can obviously do it at five foot reach as well um, and if i want to get my unarmed strike as a bonus action i will have to close in to use that because that's only got a five foot reach our bonus action flurry of blows is the same so it's a 1d6 plus four so that's what we're doing for our attacks now we've added this this defensive feature so our armor class is only 16, but if anything does get into melee combat with us and tries to hit us, we can use our reaction. And at this point, our proficiency bonus has, has risen to plus three. So our armor class at that point would be 19. Um, and if we want to, uh, we can spend a key point and do the bonus action dodge that the, uh, the monk can get. So this particular monk will probably be doing that quite a lot. So this is one of the reasons why I may not be using my unarmed strike that much. I'll be I'll be using my whip at ten foot reach twice, and then using bonus action dodge quite a bit. To so if anybody then comes in to attack me, they're going to have disadvantage on their attacks. If they do land a hit, my armor class will rise to nineteen on a melee hit. So I'm going to be pretty hard to hit right from the get go by using this kind of fighting style with this monk. So that's what this monk is built around doing. Moving forward, we're probably just going to stick with Monk all the way up when we level up from now on. Um, I mentioned that we picked up some spells. So we do have a ranged cantrip option, a nice one with this chill touch um, a cantrip that we picked up through, through Reaper um, and Toll the Dead as well. If you get surrounded by three, four creatures, um, then you can use this Word of Radiance, which will do 2d6 to every single creature that you're surrounded by, 2d6 radiant damage. So it's quite a nice little crowd control cantrip if we ever need it. And then the spells that we've got, we've got um, Bless, False Life, Healing Word, Ray of Sickness, Shield of Faith, as mentioned earlier. So we've got quite a lot of spells that we can use. Um, we picked up Stealth. Um, I didn't pick up um, Perception this time. I usually pick up Perception as a monk. 
So maybe if you wanted to, you could you could pick a background that gives you perception. I think monk, monks work quite well with perception because they get high wisdom, so they, you can get quite a lot of use out of your perception. Um, and I picked up acrobatics and stealth, which are my sort of usual monk, monk skills on the way through. So let's advance up to, to level 11 monk. So now for our ability score improvements, the first thing we're going to do is max out our dexterity. And then um, uh, at 11th level, we're going to pick up the mastery of death ability as well. So if we look at our monk at level 12 altogether, so level 11 monk, level 1 cleric. So what we've got at this point uh, is our armor class has now gone up to 17. Um, I think, you know, we can maybe start thinking about picking up some, some, uh, some equipment at this point. So I'll pick up a ring of protection and an eldritch claw tattoo, which is the really nice tattoo that kind of helps your monks a lot. Gives you a little bit of bonus um, attack and damage to your unarmed strikes. And then once a day, you can add extra damage for a minute uh, with any melee weapon or, or unarmed strike attack. So it's quite a nice um, thing to be able to pick up the eldritch claw tattoo. Now for this particular monk, I think some of the, the spell tattoos would also be an interesting one. So, for example, you could pick up, uh, you could also have a tattoo for absorb elements um, or, or shield spells, uh, which are only first level spells, so they're common tattoos. And I think um, if you had one of those prepared as well, um, and then once a day or whenever it comes up, um, the shield the shield is quite nice. Shield spell is quite nice because it doesn't just shield you from, from melee attacks, it shields from any attack. And it lasts of, uh, until the beginning of your next turn. So any attacks that get made, uh, it can help to block. Whereas your defensive duelist only works for the uh, for the melee attacks that are coming in. So it's quite a nice one, an extra one to pick up. Absorb elements. I mean, you will have evasion as well. But if you do happen to, to fail a saving throw against a nasty area of effect, then having an absorb elements tattoo handy just to fire off as a reaction, I think would also be another nice one to have. So you can end up being quite a tattooed monk in this particular case. So that, that gives a little bit of boost to our armor class again from a, a ring of protection. It also boosts our saving throws a bit as well. So, um, so this is what our monk would look like at level 11. Um, we're up to 87 hit points. Okay, so the, the amount of temporary hit points that you can pick up through um, uh, your touch of death feature has now also gone up to 13. Yeah, so we could also do that. So yes, and although we've got 87 hit points, we can now basically boost ourselves up to 100 using temporary hit points every time we reduce something to zero hit points. So we can be constantly topping that off. And I say our armor class is now up to 18, using a little bit of equipment just to help us out. And um, that will rise now, our proficiency bonus is plus four, so that will rise to 22 on incoming melee attacks using defensive duelist. Uh, and then we can dodge and add a, a disadvantage to that, which is you know up to sort of a four, four and a half uh, bonus on top of, of your armor class, essentially. Um, maybe less depending on what kind of creature you're facing. But this then at this point, this becomes a pretty tanky monk as as monks go. Uh, and then we'll what we'll do is we'll take ourselves all the way up to the top just to see what we look like at the very top. More ability scores. So we're going to pick up wisdom. Potentially, about what I'll do is um, for the last ability score improvement, I'll pick up another feat and I'll pick up the uh, the tough feat to give us some bonus hit points. So you could also pick up more wisdom and get the extra armor class um, and uh, and a little bit more and, and a little bit more of a, a boost to your stunning strikes. But I, I think for this particular monk, because we're going a slightly more tanky route, um, this is what our monk is now going to look like. So, uh, so looking at our features again, our touch of death is now giving us 23 temporary hit points at this level. So yes, so we're, we're over 200 hit points. Um, we've got a, a 20 armor class. In fact, what I'll do is I'll now, um, I'll now activate and attune to some braces of defense as well, assuming that we've picked some of those up by this point in the game. So we've now got an armor class of 22. This will go up to 28 using our defensive duelist if we get hit by a melee attack. And we can still do our dodge as a bonus action as well and give everybody disadvantage 
on our on our 28 armor class uh, which is looking uh, which is looking very nice at this point so uh, so this is what our our long death monk looks like now uh, as usual we've got you know a massive um, saving throws as well so monks get proficiencies in all saving throws um, you know we deliberately only got one negative uh, so we got minus one on our charisma but we've still got a plus six saving throw on charisma which doesn't get targeted all that often we've got a huge wisdom saving throw which is which is um, often uh, a weakness for martial classes but not for this particular one and um, yeah and a huge dexterity saving throw as well which feeds in with our evasion abilities and also our our ability to uh, deflect missiles so to catch and to throw back missiles that are that have been shot at us as a reaction that also uses your dexterity uh we've got a plus 11 to hit with our whip to do a 1d4 plus 5 at a, at a range of 10 feet uh, it's actually a plus 12 with our unarmed strikes boosted a little bit by our Eldritch Claw tattoo. We may have picked up a magical whip as well at this point. I'd hope that we would. I haven't put that in, but if we do, then that will obviously boost our, our to hit and damage a little bit. Again, this will now be a 1d10. So at this point, the, the whip will be doing a 1d10 plus 5 of damage, which is quite nice. And then we've got our touch of the, of the long death attack, uh, which has now been... Uh, activated at the uh, the high level yeah i don't think that includes your wisdom your wisdom modifier i think it's just a straightforward 2d10 i think that may be a mistake i think it's a 2d10 plus four anyway so this is what our monk looks like maxed out we've got a huge walking speed of 60 feet so obviously we can dash up to 120 we can bonus action dash now uh, we've got pretty decent armor class especially if we if we add in our defensive duelist feet, um, our whip attacks are using the slasher. So every time we hit someone, we're going to be slowing them down by 10 feet uh, once per turn for when we hit someone. And um, we've got all these temporary hit points. If we do get hit and somehow reduced, get our, our hit points reduced down to zero, then you know we've got 20 key points. So we've got up to 20 attempts, uh, 20 times when we can come back up to one to one hit point again. So at this point, um, the Percival demise, our long death monk is, is becoming not far off unkillable. Very, very hard to kill him at this point. I mean, it's hard enough to hit him. And then, you know, to get through all of these, all of these hit points, potentially topping up temporary hit points as we go along during combat, it's going to be very, very difficult to, to put this guy down and keep him down, basically. So this is a, this is the more defensive end for a long death monk. I quite like this one. Um, as I say, it's a bit of a tank monk. Uh, so I quite like this build. And I think overall, as I said, I think the the way of the long death is my favourite uh, monk tradition, uh, which is why I saved it until last. So uh, if you like this kind of content, then uh, please do drop a like below the video and subscribe to the channel so you can hear more from me. Uh, if you've got any suggestions or other things that you'd like to add, any comments on this build, then please do uh, also drop me a comment down below. I do try to read all of the comments uh, and respond where I can. So uh, thank you very much for joining me and we'll see you again next time.